because it's two first-year head coaches. On the flip side, one of the all-time greats for the Orange, it's Felicia Leggett-Jack. When you think of Syracuse basketball, it's synonymous with Felicia Leggett-Jack. She has really built a great, solid program just through the first eight games of this season and has this team in a great spot at 6-2. and Leggett-Jack joined by our former teammate Sue Ludwig, sitting next to her as the assistant. Ball is up and we're underway inside the JMA Wireless Dome, Syracuse and Coppin State. Look right here for De'Asia Fair to get started early because she's going to be the one that facilitates this offense coming off another great game on the road at Yale. No Asia Strong in the starting five for the Deuce tonight. She started all eight games thus far. Instead, both Georgia Woolley and Elena Rice, who have been in and out of the starting lineup, get the nod for Coach FLJ. And right there, that's a good first look right there for Dariana Lewis, too. You like her jump shot. She can hit that from about 15 feet. Good open look. Lewis 6-1, plenty of size, and will figure to play an even more important role today down low with no strong in the starting lineup. And that time right there, it was Georgia Willis. She's off the block. She's working down on Jewel Watkins, but Watkins getting a little too physical early on, pushing her giving Syracuse the basketball match. You get the sense if you're Coppin State, you're going to need to be physical today to pull off an upset like this. Just two and seven on the year so far. And the last time these squads played, it was all Qs. Hyman trying to start the party. Doesn't go her way. A 108-38 win back in 2016 when these two teams went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Eagles the other way. That's cash. Mozzie Staples from the corner puts the Eagles on top early. And she's someone that doesn't really shoot the three ball well so far this season. Just 18%, but she gets him going early, and that's exactly what Woods wants to see for his team. Elena Rice wants it herself, left it short. Lewis couldn't clean up the mess. And Jalinda Sally's going to be huge on that offensive rebound. Pardon, defensive. Hope Evans tried to get to the rack, but to no avail. Orange take over there. You see your cap in state starting five. An interesting group in that Luke Coppin State has really changed up that starting five pretty consistently. A lot of moving parts, but their head coach, Jermaine Wood, says he's okay with that. And that's because they've got a lot of injuries on this team right now. You're missing three, four players that could potentially be starters, so he has to make adjustments with that lineup as the year progresses. Staples, two for two, and our hands up in the air. How about this? A 6-0 start to the game for the Eagles. Wow, that's what Wood said. They have to start out fast, and Staples really took that to heart, and bang, another one. Fair likes her matchup, but a little too much mustard on that shot. And now here we go again. Coppin State trying to get out in the open break. Staples had to pick up her dribble. Another three ball on the way. Sally the board, and now Coppin State, if they want, can reset. Evan swings it to the near corner, and Staples content to slow it up a bit. Likes her matchup, draws the double. Lewis takes it away. Now Woolley out in transition. Fair, full head of steam, up and in off the glass, and the Qs are on the board. Defense leads to offense. That was beautiful from Dariana Lewis. That's why she leads the team in blocks. Great play, and Fair just streaking up the court. You mentioned some of the struggles as far as Coppin State shooting the basketball. This is a team that converts it just a 24% clip from downtown. But firing on all cylinders early and fouled going up was Watkins. But an encouraging start nonetheless for the Eagles. The Coppin State was in the dome yesterday and it was just shooting practice. Coach Wood said we need to just get up some shots, really see it fall through the net here. Again, as we mentioned before, on the road, you're in a different home. You've got to play to the strengths of the court that you're at. So here's Jewel Watkins at the charity strike, makes good on the first. Just a 58% free throw shooter so far this year. And Coach Jermaine Woods pleased with the early start thus far for the Eagles. Watkins coming off that career high, 35 point performance. Left the second one too strong, but another offensive board. Watkins from way downtown, she got it. This is so impressive too right now. You're seeing a team that is firing on all cylinders. And if they want to continue this, that's the only way that they're going to stay in this game. Fair trying to answer. Gets a kind roll. The Asia Fair, all four Syracuse points so far. Seems like the last time she was at home against Bucknell, she really took over in that second quarter. They're trailing early, but it will take more parts than fair. 
Watkins going for a heat check, was bumped on the way, so she'll go right back to the line, only for two shots. You're seeing Coppin State move quickly. They're getting up the floor. Watkins, a little gather dribble here, and just a little bit of contact right there from Deja Fair. But if you're an Eagles fan right now, you are smiling because you're seeing this team be aggressive, and they're embracing the fact that this is a Power 5 team and not running away from it. Last time out for Coppin State, a heartbreaker of a loss, 84-81 in overtime to William and Mary, a game where they put up 28 points in the fourth quarter to force OT, but outscored 11 to eight in that extra frame. It is three shots. That was a three point ball from Watkins. So the third is true. And it's an early 12-4 lead for the Eagles, just over three minutes in. Coach said, don't let their record make you think something else. This is a team that can score. Fair is money from downtown. How about DeAsia? All seven points for Syracuse. Belong to number two in the orange and white. It's what we talked about in the pregame. She's someone that can score at will. It doesn't matter if you put her inside the paint, outside the arc. She's going to find a way to get points on the board. Watkins on the drive was no good with the left hand. This is where the orange are dangerous. Out in the open break with Fair concocting the offense. Woolley thought about a step back. The two former Buffalo teammates coming two hours east over to Syracuse. DeAsia again. She's on fire. If, if you take DeAsia Fair out of this lineup right now, who knows what the score would be. It would be 12 to zip at this point. She's got all 10. Sally down low couldn't finish. Second effort is there. Well, one thing about Jalinda Sally is coming into this game, 20 of her 25 rebounds were offensive. She's going to be someone that's a force down low, and it's going to look to get the basketball after a shot's put up. In her fifth year with the program is Sally, one of the tenured veterans on this team is fair is fouled on the drive. We're seeing Syracuse right now kind of give space for DeAsia Fair to work. They're going down low all the way near the block. Just a little bit too much contact here from Hope Evans and that will tag her with the foul each time. Courtney Gardner into the game for Coppin State as Sally heads to the bench. Fair's got open space in the corner. Instead, she wants to work around a Dariana Lewis screen. Swung around for Hyman. Nice jab step and a nice drive. Can't put the exclamation point on it, though. You want to get Hyman going, too. She had an electric game against Purdue. She's someone that can score. Chopping state. Bucket and a foul. So going to the line for one more. How about this start for the Eagles? Especially for Mozzie Staples, too. Coach Wood said that not only has she bloomed and blossomed into this role because she, before she came here Northeastern last year coming off the bench a little bit but now she's really grown into the spot as a starter and just charging head first at that Syracuse defense Coach Shedder's shot might not be falling as of much as of recently just 2 for 17 last game against William and Mary but still really the heart and soul of this team Deja Fair patiently waiting, calling out the orders. Cheyenne McEvans in the game for the juice now. Fair stops, pops, and hits. It almost looks like a shot from the WNBA. It's beautiful with the dribble work. She's able to get her defender on their heels and then jumps up. A travel on the other end for Coppin State and all 12 Syracuse points courtesy of DeAsia Fair. The only problem, Coppin State's got a four-point lead. 16 to 12. What a start for the Eagles. Full figure points in all eight games. She's already hit that mark. We're only five minutes in. She's in takeover right, mode right now, Johnny. She's doing everything for the Orange, scoring on offense, but they're trailing by four points. So what you want to see from Syracuse is start getting it to Tisha Hyman, Dariana Lewis. Lewis can score down low. Hyman, she's been really good and efficient at that jump shot. So if they want to get back into this one, you got to distribute the ball a little bit more. Hyman 0 for 2 from the floor so far tonight, and she's on the bench right now. Asia Strong high off the glass. Welcome to the ball game, Asia. And the Orange are within two. Certainly interesting to not have Strong in the starting lineup. She's been so good near the basket, rebounding, and you saw it right there. 
Watkins gives it off top of the key for Gardner. Likes her matchup against Fair. Now the kick out. Staples, can she make her third? Too short. You like the drive there from Gardner, too. You suck in the defense, find the out, out shot right there from Mossie Staples. Can't connect, but a great look. Aaron feed from Woolley right into the bread basket for Captain State. Here they come the other way. Gardner brings it back up top. Woolley providing the defense, tried to pick her pocket, but they'll say a little too much body that time around. Just got a little too carried away, certainly, as you said, Johnny, with the hand. Just too much contact here. You can't do that. And that's going to be called a foul each time. Well, the Buffalo transfer is the perpetrator. So she makes her way to the bench. Weave offense going right now for Coppin State. Another tray ball. It's a play, but the second effort is there. Great job filling the lane, finding the opportunity to score. Colleen Buckner is their sixth player of the year so far. She comes off the bench and she brings that energy and it's a spark plug. Like Evans was hacked on the way up. Buckner, a really interesting story, Luke, because she's someone who is the leading rebounder on this team but is asked to come off the bench from her head coach, Jermaine Woods. And that's one thing that she instilled into him too. She said, I'd like to come off the bench. You look at this team and they have struggled with bench points. They had one game where it was one bench point and that was against Pittsburgh. You need to have that balance because if you have all of your great players in the starting lineup and no one to come in, then you're just going with that first drive and nothing to back you up. Buckner, who started to begin the year out of necessity due to Coppin State having to deal with a couple of injuries and injuries that have lingered so far into the early portion of this regular season. McEvans can't make good on the second. Ojea Alexander for the Eagles. The Miax leading scorer last year. They're doing just fine without her, though, in large part due to Mozzie Staples. Everything that Coach has asked of her going into this game, she has responded. And Aaron Feed gives the ball right back to the Eagles yet again. One-handed finish. Courtney Gardner high up off the glass, and it's a seven-point Coppin State lead. Speed, pressure, and this defense that has been relentless on Syracuse, not giving them any open opportunities. Extra feed for McEvans. Didn't like the look, so tried a baseline drive. Now strong off the glass and in. Asia Strong living up to her namesake, and the Kings pull within five. You're exactly right, Johnny. We asked Asia for it fair yesterday at practice. What's one word to describe Asia Strong? And she goes, strong. That sounds about right. Another three ball on the way. Off back rim, and the Orange secure this defensive board. McEvans into the lane. Nice move, but an unkind bounce off the back rim. Staples wants to get out in the open court. Pushing the break off the glass. Too strong. And now Syracuse on it, courtesy of McEvans. Over half court. Two on two if she wants it. Fair. Spots up. And rims around and out. That shot, you just don't need to take that right there. That's one where she needs to slow the offense down, get things working in in-system ball, look for a pick and roll, an off-screen, flash screen, you name it, but that was not the shot to take. Aaron had the hot hand to start this game, but hasn't scored since coming out of the break. No good on the other end for Coppin State. Fair out in transition, you betcha. 14 first quarter points so far for De'Asia Fair, who is having herself quite the period. She's quite the seeker too. She gets up court, she looks back, and it's all about that vision, seeing that the defense isn't near the other rim and finding a way to score. Staples, third team all Miak a year ago, gives it off for Courtney Gardner, the sophomore. Out of the corner on the drive, Watkins gets the floater. It's hard to really pick apart anything negative for Coppin State right now. They're doing everything right. They're playing hard on defense. They're going fast at the rim and making shots. Anything you can do, I can do better. Strong answers on the other end. How about Coppin State? Up over 50% from the floor on the night so far. Coppin State still with a three-point lead. Orange have some work to do.
Coppin State a three-point lead. Shots falling on both ends right now. Each team an identical nine for 17 from the floor. And now the Eagles try to bolster their lead. Evans swings it left, a three-pointer well short. Offensive rebound, though, goes to Evans all the way back near half court. Those four quick passes, too. The ball movement was exceptional on that. Good hands by the duo of Fair and Hyman. Now a two-on-two -two chance on the break, and Fair tried to make it look easy. Couldn't get the layup to go. Loose board, couple of bodies hit the floor. And a whistle comes in, jump ball. Active hands from Biagia Ferry led to the opportunity to take advantage, to take away actually that second chance opportunity for Coppin State. Fair nearly three steals a game and she is a beast defensively in every sense of the word. Well, she has more steals than she does have turnovers and I think that's something that we have to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, she can score and she's really good on the offensive end, but she can pick your pockets every day of the week because she's so quick with her hands. Fair and Hyman, really a dynamic duo, combining for 33 points, nine assists, and five and a half steals per game. Archer in the full court press. No sweat though, Coppin State breaks it easily. They get it to their point guard, Staples up top. Gets it right back. Couple of ball fakes. Now dumped down low, relentless defense from the orange. About a 12 second differential between shot and game clock. Mozzie Staples, are you kidding me? Six point lead for the Eagles and the Orange can now hold if they want. Rice to the cup. Great shot from Mozzie Staples. It's her third three pointer, but great job of using the clock for the Orange. Eagles got to hurry. Hamilton right back for Staples. One on the timer. Off the backboard. Everyone can catch their breath after an action-backed first quarter. The Eagles, a four-point lead, and they've got the orange on the ropes through one. Still plenty of time. Coppin State 20s from downtown in the overtime loss against William and Mary. She's already up to three for five when letting it fly from beyond the arc tonight. She's been a leader as a vocal person on the court for the Eagles, and she's also making her shots leading by example, too. A redshirt junior in her second year, transfer from Northeastern, and Fort Washington, Maryland native. Deja Fair trying to keep her hot hand going. Couldn't do so, and now here we go again. Staples out in transition with the right hand. It falls. Fast and fiery was the two words that Coach Jack described this team as. Mozzie Staples now up to 15. She is just going from coast to coast on this court. A thousand point scorer during her high school days, and that play certainly translating over to the collegiate level. He's just strong on the perimeter. Doesn't like her matchup as the orange rotate from near to far side. Jump down low, strong, right block, strong finish. Syracuse needs to do exactly that through the rest of the second quarter and the game. Look down low, you have two of the biggest players on the court right now with Kyra Wood and Asia Strong down low. Orange trying to play to their size advantage right now with the two bigs on the court. They go right back down low. Strong defense from Wood, but it doesn't matter. Jalinda Sally tack on two more. Six foot four, she's so good with her post moves and can finish through contact. Fair step back, Jay. Off back rim, right the offensive rebound. Pardon me, that's Wilson, the offensive rebound. And tacks on two more for the Cubes. And Nia Wilson hasn't scored since Penn State, so getting some early action here in the second quarter, you love to see it for Wilson. Hey, and it makes sense. If you're Felicia Leggett Jack, your team down early against a team that maybe you don't expect to be losing to at this point in the ball game, you gotta make some moves and perhaps some substitutions that might make some people raise their eyebrows a bit, but you gotta try things at this point if you're FLJ. Well, you think about what's been working for Coppin State, it's their speed. They're getting up and down the court fast, so go with speed against speed. Staples up top, Hyman tried to swoop in and tap the basketball, but could not. Staples for Sally. Evans on the drive, kick out, Staples. Open three, nothing but air. Offensive rebound and a foul. One thing that is a downfall of running that 2-3 zone defense is boxing out, finding a player to go get. And in that situation right here, Staples is off with the three-point shot, but a great job from Colleen Buckner getting into the midst of that clouded paint 
and coming up with an offensive rebound. Buckner, the leading rebounder on this team. She checks in at about eight per game. She's already got five tonight. A lot of players approaching that season average mark, if not already past it here are early stages in the second quarter. The top and state with the coach Woods, the best thing about their schedule and their record, two and seven. No, you don't like looking at that so much, but this team is getting better as the season progresses. And a lot of close games as of recently as well for Coppins. They make no mistake, they might only be two and seven, but not getting blown out of the water by any stretch. Hyman tried to get something going, but before she could pull the trigger, a whistle on the floor. Looked like Alexandria Hamilton had a little bit too much contact on the drive from Tisha Hyman. Let's hope she can get going here still without any buckets for the second leading scorer for the Orange. Jewel Watkins back in the game for Coppin State. Mentioned some of those recent close losses. Their last four games, they've only dropped by an average of six points. They're keeping it close because they understand the keys to success, which is driving inside, getting to the free throw line, too. They've got an uptick from the free throw shot. Woolley, step back three. That's money. Georgia Woolley from the corner. She's dangerous. Can't leave her that open. And the orange now within three. She hit a three last game against Yale. Another one here. It just takes one for her to start cooking. Sharpshooter in every sense of the word. Sally down low, double team, it doesn't matter. Jolinda Sally with authority on that low block. She is so talented down there. We mentioned her on a few possessions ago. Get her the ball, she's gonna go to work. Lewis on the drive. Sally again, the rebound. And Coppin State can cushion its five point lead here. Watkins, good ball fake, has the separation, cleans up her own mess and gets it to go. Defenders were strapped around her, and yet she was still able to haul in the offensive rebound. There is no quit to this Eagles team right now, and that's why they're ahead. Fair, dangerous cross-court feed for Woolley. She just made from there a few moments ago. Up top, Hyman, trying to create some separation. Dariana Lewis right back for Hyman. Got it! Nothing but net for Tisha. Exactly what they need right there from Syracuse. Tisha Hyman pulls up from three. She's looked good all season from there. That will get her going, hopefully, if you're an orange player. Now Calvin State the other way. Watkins on the drive, stops at the free throw line, but she travels. Couple of substitutions taking place. Anaya Wilson on for the orange, and Alexandria Hamilton back into the ball game for the Eagles. Tania Wilson, she's someone that can really play strong near the rim too, coming over from Buffalo, another one of those few transfers that Coach Jack brought over. And hopefully she can grab some rebounds as well. Lewis and Wilson providing the size right now alongside Hyman Fair and Woolley, the five on the court for the Cubes. We like seeing that cut though from Lewis too. They're moving that last possession when Hyman hit that three point shot. Everything felt static. No one was moving. It takes a lot of movement and everyone cutting in different directions to create open space for shooters to shoot. And make no mistake, Syracuse hasn't really struggled offensively. They're up over 50%. Fair trying to add to that. She can't. Lewis the offensive rebound, but her pass too high for Hyman. It's a race to the loose basketball and a whistle beforehand. I think Mazda Staples would have liked had Hyman not touched that because I think she would have had an easier look at the rim right there, but because it's an over and back call, they'll have to pass it in from the baseline. So, Coppin State to inbound, working with the luxury of a four-point lead. They're now in the middle stages of this second quarter. Staples to take it, scans her options. It's it inbounds, now Watkins, baseline try. Good bounce pass, and a foul. Woolly is shocked too as she's bent over from that saying, what are you talking about on that call right there? Looked to be a little bit, a little bit of contact though, so right call. Coppin State to inbound from underneath, underneath their own hoop yet again. With Hamilton straight away. No one picks her up. Staples in the corner, tries one more time, she's fouled. Sanaya Wilson stands with her hand up in the air as if to signal, I thought I got all ball. 
but the officials say otherwise. Well, one, you have to feed the hot hand, and that's Mozzie Staples here. Gets a little bit of the fingertips from Wilson. Had she chopped her feet a little bit more, closing out on that shot may have taken away that three points at the free throw line coming up. So Staples right back to the stripe. Spot where she's 0 for 1 so far tonight. Does have a game high 15 points. Make it 16 if she can's the first. She's just cruising right now because she's using her speed and using her strengths to get to the basket and also shooting that three point shot terrifically well. Staples, who has really just seen her role expand year after year at the collegiate game, only averaged about five points per game in a reserve role during her two years at Northeastern. But she comes over to Coppin State and steps into a little bit of a bigger piece of the puzzle. And with the injuries that we've mentioned earlier, this Eagles team has been dealt. Staples has really spearheaded this offense. And that's what it's all about for college basketball, too. When your number is called on, how do you respond? And she has really embraced that role and been so strong. Wilson, book it in the foul. Sanaya Wilson left her matchup and went right to the cup sturdy at the block what she does so well for this team is takes her defender and says excuse me i'm gonna finish this at the rim and get another shot at the free throw line Down goes against colleen buckner her first of the night so wilson at the line trying to make this a one possession game converts on the end one and the orange are within three she had four points against Yale, but the previous three, no points. So, again, Coach Jack trying to change it up, make adjustments to this roster on the floor, and she's already making an impact early. Well, Felicia Leggett Jack has run a pretty tight ship so far as far as the minutes distribution is concerned. As Captain State tacks on to more courtesy of Conway Buckner. All five Syracuse starters averaging north of 25 minutes per night as Lewis lays it high off the glass and in. Keeping your eyes up. That's how that play started. It's how it ended. Finding the cutter and making the basket. Evans at the free throw line. Outlet fee. Now Watkins. Wants to take Hyman one-on-one. -on -one, but Tisha applying the defense. Right back for Evans. Makes a move and has a wide open teammate down low. But Buckner too strong on the lay-in. Oh, that was a beautiful pass down low too. Just couldn't finish for Buckner. Fair with a couple of nifty moves on the drive. She was found in the process. Looks like they'll say on the floor. So 38 points in the game so far for Syracuse. An efficient pace offensively, but they're still down by three. Coppin State up by three. Cameron is there. We'll break down what's been an offensive showdown through one half of play. Mozzie Staples, she's been the staple for Coppin State. De'Asia Fair for Syracuse. It's been a heavyweight bout between those two guards. Staples hitting everything, three threes in the first quarter, and De'Asia Fair putting the orange on her back with 12 of their first 14 points in this game. Both about 15 points. Both teams shooting over 50%. We'll send it back out to Johnny and Luke in the dome. Maybe an upset bit. A whole lot of offense, to say the least. Thanks so much, guys. Coppin State, the three-point lead. As for the Eagles, they've already got more points through this first half, 3-1, than they've had in a first half all year. And mind you, there's still four minutes and 37 seconds left to go in the second quarter. They're pushing the tempo and the pace of this game. They're not waiting for Syracuse. They're attacking with every possession that they have in their hand. They're making it vital to go score and go at the rim. 15 points on the night now for De'Asia Fair. No other orange player in double figures. The Buffalo transfer can't go two for two. And now Coppin State can add to their lead. Staples, a game high, 17 points. Shovels it off for Hope Evans. Evans zigzagging her way up ahead. Now right back for Staples. Works around the screen, but a foul. An offensive foul at that. And it looks like it's going to be an illegal screen that time. Coming on Coppin State here. Staples and Sally just comes. She's moving her feet a little bit too much off that elbow. The Orange will certainly take it. An opportunity to tie the game. Perhaps take the lead here. Down by two. 
as you four for eight from downtown so far tonight. Can they make it five for nine? They can. And guess who? It's DeAsia Fair yet again. Sanaya Wilson set that up to perfect screen. Fair slipped into the corner. No one saw her and nothing but twine. Orange have the lead. Now trying to apply the defense on the other end. Out of bounds, another turnover. Back-to-back -back turnovers, Syracuse taking advantage. They came into this game averaging 17 and a half points off turnovers, and it's something that will take from their momentum. And again, back to this pass into the corner. Deasia Fair, look at the confidence on her face. She's just cool, calm, and collected. It feels like nothing deteriorates that. Must be something about that near side corner tonight. <laughs> Fair try to go two for two. She can't that time. Offensive rebound, though, goes to Fair. Kicks it out for a cutting Lewis. And a bit of a miscommunication as the Orange turned the ball over. She thought that it was going to be Lewis going out to the three-point line, but Lewis thought, here, I'm going to cut to the rim. I got you on that backdoor cut. But as you said, a little miscommunication that led to the turnover. So Syracuse a one-point lead. And Captain State trying to prevent any sort of momentum swing from carrying on any further. Staples and Evans playing catch atop the key. Out down low. Buckner kick out Staples. Watkins on the drive, step back for two, and a very kind roll off the rim, then the backboard, and it falls. Everything's falling for him, so you would expect that to go down. Watkins just looking at the defense, saw a little space, and got it to fall home. Up over 55% from the floor so far tonight for the Eagles, a team that on the year entered tonight shooting just 34%. Double team applied on Asia Fair. Kick out for her open teammate McEvans. Wilson down low. Couldn't bank in the layup. And a foul on the rebound. And that's what happens too when you start to double team. It allows other players to get open. It was a great cut to Sanaya Wilson. She just couldn't finish the open layup. And Coppin State takes advantage. So it is two shots for the Eagles. We're in the bonus with Watkins at the strike for two. Leading scorer, Ohio native. Trying to tack on to this one-point lead. Can't make the first. And that's one thing to mention, too. Syracuse allowed just four free throws, Johnny, against Yale in that big comeback win. Already, this is now the 13th free throw for Coppin State, and we're just in the first half. Getting to the line are the Eagles, but not necessarily making the most of those opportunities. They're only 7 for 13 from the strike so far tonight. Hyman likes her matchup. Calls for a Lewis screen. Stops, pops, and hits. You said it. Stop and pop too. Caught her defender slipping too much toward the rim. She pulled up at the perfect opportunity and got it to go. That is her bread and butter. That mid-range jump shot. Top and stink. Concocting the play from the perimeter, down low for Sally. Double team, righty hook, won't go. Syracuse the loose rebound. Orange trying to end this first half on a high note. McEvans on the wing, works it to Wilson. Nice give and go. An open teammate for Stretch Lewis. She cans the short corner, Jay. And can you get a pass to assist accolade right there from Cheyenne McEvans? That was beautiful. Finding the backdoor cut. Wilson finds Lewis and a great shot. That's Lewis's MO, that mid-range short corner jumper. Orange trying to turn defense into offense. Fair. Foot on the gas pedal. Outlet feed Hyman. Couple of nice crossovers. Putting on the moves. And she's hacked going up. Woo! We were getting the show right there from Tisha Hyman showing off the skills, and she's so dominant inside, too. Let me just look at these moves right here. A little bit of sauce. Oh, putting them in a blender, too. Doesn't get the shot to fall, but will go to the line. If you're Drew Watkins, how on earth do you defend that? It's just really tough. I think any defender trying to guard Hyman in college basketball is going to have a very difficult time. Hyman, someone who has had quite the journey as one of the more longer tenured members of this Syracuse team. Missed the 2020-2021 season with an ACL injury before coming back last year and garnering honorable mention all ACC knocks. Orange up by four. Another turnover for Coppin State. Here come the Cuse. Fair to the rack. Gives off Hyman. She got it. 
Momentum officially on the side of SU and a six point juice lead. Syracuse creating turnovers on the defensive end and turning those into points. That's exactly what you need to do to reclaim a lead like they have. Corner three on the other end for Watkins. Can't get it to go and Lewis, nice box out and an even better board. Hyman surveying her options. Lewis, long two, it's short. Maybe a little bit out of her range. You see her a little bit closer to the basket. But again, going back to that defensive rebound, Syracuse is not allowing Coppin State to have those second chances like they had in the first. Orange on a 13-2 run, and Coppin State can't halt it. Four-second differential between shot and game clock. Wilson on the low block. Defender straight all over her. But it doesn't matter. One bounce, two bounce, and then it falls. Sanaya Wilson crosses the 50-point threshold for Syracuse. And now Coppin State can hold. She saw the size disadvantage and went to work. Coppin State has to hurry. Watkins, corner feed Staples, knocked down low. Sally trying to go to work. High off the glass and in. So Coppin State gets the last laugh, but Syracuse surges a 15 to four run to end the first half. And SU regains the lead 51 to 45, two quarters down, two to go. From a power five team like Syracuse, there's a lot to sit and think about. Only five players are in on the scoreboard for Coppin State as far as the points department is concerned. Mozzie Staples leading the charge for the Eagles with 17 points. DeAsia Fair, a game high 18 on the flip side for the Cubes. Coppin State working towards that right hoop in this third quarter. They work it down low. Sally trying to go up despite defenders all over her and couldn't tap it in. Instead, Syracuse can get some transition offense going. Hyman, quick trigger three. She got it. Hit a three-pointer in that first half. Now hitting one in the second half to get her going early. That will be huge through the rest of the second half. I'm attacking on three for the Cuse, and now Coppin State trying to make sure they stay in this game. Syracuse op has opened up its largest lead of the game with nine points. Top of the key. Out of the near side, lost the dribble, and another Coppin State turnover. Luke, we saw it down that home stretch in the first half. Coppin State just couldn't take care of the basketball, and now that carrying over into the third quarter as well. And you have to tip your cap to Syracuse, their defense. They've been applying that pressure, making it difficult for ball handlers to make successful passes and shots. Strong tried to spot up from the top of the yard. It was too strong and some hard contact underneath the rim and the fight for the rebound. Well, it's just two players going all out for the basketball right here. Nothing too aggressive, both players just trying to get that rebound there and coming up with the foul. Coppin State trying to break this 45 mark that they've been stuck on coming out of the break. They do just that. Staples out in transition comes up with the ball, but can't lay it in. And now Syracuse has an opportunity to, opportunity to recollect themselves a bit. Fair, free throw line J off right, and Staples collects the loose board. Fair was hot in that first quarter, but has since slowed down just a bit here from that second now into the third quarter. Staples up top, dumps it down low for Hamilton. Fair tried to pick her pocket. Hamilton could regain. Now Staples up top, working on McEvans down the left wing, and a feed goes up and in for Sally. Asia Strong that time, she switches onto the drive and staying open ready for the shot is Sally, and she's able to finish. Syracuse needs to do a better job of knowing who's on the floor and who's near the rim. McEvans spots up for a three. Nothing but net. Plus three for McEvans, and the Cubes expand the lead. One thing that Coach Jack said is that her defensive player is Cheyenne McEvans, but that three that time, she can get the offense rolling, too. Seems like every time Syracuse punches, the Eagles... Capable of punching right back. Still in this thing, only down six. He's your strong from the paint. First try is no good, but the second one is. 
Wichita State the last two years as a shocker, and she's brought that electricity to Syracuse. She just never gives up on the play, gets the offensive rebound, and finds a way to put it into the hole. That's the kind of physicality that Orange fans have come to expect when it comes to Asia Strong. On the other end, Evans kick out feed Hamilton, trying to make something happen. Her floater is good, and the foul. Hit the court hard, but she'll head to the line for one more. And it starts with the ball movement, too. It's a great job of Coppin State moving the ball and an excellent job driving into the lane, taking the contact tough and finishing. So Hamilton to the free throw line for one more as a couple of substitutions get squared away. Sanaya Wilson into the game for the Orange. She'll tag out Dariana Lewis. Lewis had that great hand one earlier in that second quarter. She's someone that we'll see an uptick of minutes as the course of this game continues. But she's been a rock down low. Hamilton can't make good on the N1, but a jump ball on the ensuing rebound. Gives possession to Syracuse. You want to see Syracuse here look inside towards the rim. Hyman got this third quarter started with that deep three shot, but as long as they're screening, moving the ball, looking down low, shots will open up near the rim. Tisha Hyman got picked up nearly at half court, had to dish it off for Asia Strong. Playing atop the key, out of her normal zone where she operates. Gives it right back for Hyman. Tried to set a screen. Hyman working around that screen. The mid-range try won't go. Rebound goes out of bounds. It's V-Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Colleen Buckner, too, just getting open, finding a way to score. She's their most lethal player off the bench. The Asia Fair floater from the free throw line extended won't go, but Sanaya Wilson, the loose board for Syracuse, back to Fair. Three goes in and out. Coppin State down by four, trying to make something happen offensively. Watkins on the drive, nice dish to the right block. And it's up and in from Buckner yet again. We've seen that in multiple possessions now, Johnny. It's the drive and bounce pass kick to the opposite block. They're taking this defense of the orange and picking it apart slowly down low. Wilson creates the separation and her second effort is a good one. Offensive rebounds, just like Asia Strong, she's also one of those strong-minded players that doesn't give up on her shot and continues to follow until she finds the end of the twine. Despite what it might seem, Coppin State plus one on the glass so far. This rebound won't go to anyone because there was a foul on the floor before either Hyman or Buckner could corral it. A little bit of contact there. You're going to get that call each time. Each team making a couple of swaps here. It's Sally back in the game for Coppin State. Georgia Woolley on for the Cues as Asia Strong heads to the bench. Alexandria Hamilton, a breather for the Eagles. We'll see if Woolley can get going into this one, too. Coming off 11 points against Yale. She hit that three-pointer earlier in this game. She can be a really consistent scorer when she gets the basketball. Those three points are only of the night. Nobody picks up Mozzie Staples, which is a dangerous game to play. Staples, 17 points so far tonight. Can't make good on that attempt, though. Now DeAsia Fair, triple teamed. Outlet feed Hyman, spots up, and her tray is good. It was the vision of DeAsia Fair allowing herself to drive in. Defense sinks. Nice whip around pass and Hyman. Two three pointers already in this third quarter. Seven point lead for Syracuse. Syracuse by seven halfway through the third quarter. Luke, how are they doing it? Well, it's a step and repeat of penetration inside in a dump town 
a dump down pass into the lane. You're seeing their forwards just sit at the block. They've pulled up a chair. They're not going anywhere. What's that saying, Johnny? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, each team is well up over 50% from the floor on the night, which for Coppin State is really uncharted territory. Well, this season, you look at them as a whole, and they have really struggled to shoot the ball. But tonight, it's two reasons. One, they're cutting to the lane, finding open shots. And two, the Syracuse defense has been slouching just a little bit here in that second half, and it's why the Eagles are still in this one. The Asia Fair leading the charge for the Orange with 18 points. On the flip side, it's been mostly the Mozzie Staples show for Coppin State with 17, but four Eagles players now up into double figures, a little bit more of a methodical attack. Well, you're seeing that distribution, and that's excellent basketball. When you're able to spread the ball around to different players, Syracuse defense can't just hone in on one and shut them down with a double team. It's Staples and Evans up top right now. Pass intercepted by Woolley. Three on two for the Cubes. Woolley on the drive with the right hand. You bet. Coast to coast. We just talked about that. Having pressure on defense, especially with those cuts. Defense going to offense. Woolley doing just that for the orange. And now the Eagles looking for an answer. It's Buckner working on Wilson. Willie intercepts it again. Two straight steals for the Australian. Up ahead, DeAsia Fair, full head of steam. Can't get it, and a jump ball. Why has Syracuse been a spark out of this timeout? It's because of Georgia Woolley. She checks in, back-to-back -back steals, leading to her own bucket, and now this time, finding it up the court to DeAsia Fair, who draws, doesn't actually draw the foul. Wooly, someone who brings plenty of energy and plenty of expertise. Coming over from Buffalo, the 2021 MAC Freshman of the Year. Second on Buffalo in points per game a season ago to none other than her new orange teammate, DeAsia Fair. Spot up three from the far corner. Off right rim from Watkins, but Coppin State still possesses the basketball. And, it, and I encourage Coppin State to go away from the three. What's working is inside. Don't change that. Staples trying to do just that. But the floater was well too strong. Coppin State will retain possession, though, with 10 on the shot clock. Gotta run this box formation here. Look for someone beyond the arc. Up top. They work it to Kaya Jenkins into the game. Coppin State hands the basketball right back to the queue. Well, Kaya Jenkins is someone that hasn't played as much as some of these other players. Just a sophomore out of Deer Park, New York. And she can be someone that can score near the rim. But it's just all about how many minutes are you playing. I'm in with her back to the basket. Outlet feed for Woolley. McEvans fresh into the game on that far side. Trying to get to the rack. Up with the right hand and she's fouled. Evans just doing a good job here of continuing to dribble the basketball. Takes the hard contact. It was on the ground before the shot, though, so it'll come in from the baseline. Work it to Hyman on the drive. Between the legs move, now picks up her dribble. Fair bails are out straight away. And now the Syracuse point guard surveying the options. Whistle off ball, and Coppin State takes over. This is here where you want to see Coppin State take advantage of the missed opportunity from Syracuse. The Asia Fair and Sanaya Wilson gets caught with that illegal screen. You can't start moving and turning into the defender because when it blocks their path of allowing themselves to get to the offense, that's a foul. And not the first time tonight we've seen that goal. Hamilton spot up three, it's short. Woolly the rebound. Boy, what a factor Georgia Woolley has been since checking back into this basketball game, particularly defensively. The Asia Fair can't kiss the glass. Coppin State corrals the board. Now here comes Staples. Good feed, Watkins on the drive. Right back for Staples, right in the face of Hyman. It's well short. Watkins saves it, acrobatic save at that. Staples putting the moves on. Sally at the free throw line. Good power dribble, but she's stuffed by Lewis. Great block from Lewis. She's got 19 on the season. But Coppin State has the basketball for one reason and one reason only. It's because Jewel Watkins, incredible save. And Sally 
Oh, denied from Lewis. And for what it's worth, Watkins out there now, she's playing with three fouls, but not dialing back the aggressiveness whatsoever. Neither is Jolinda Sally as she's fouled. What a bad end one opportunity, but she'll take the two shots nonetheless. She just stays consistent as a wrecking havoc down low. Just a nice gather, dribble, turn, puts up the shot. A little bit of contact off that roll, just goes a little bit to the left. She would have a chance for three. So Sally to the free throw line, a place where she makes good on just 65% of her attempts. In her fifth year with the program, they started every game since dating all the way back to about midway through the 2020-21 season. And if she hits this one right here too, it'll be a season high of 13 points. She does just that. Syracuse up by eight, trying to make this a double-digit lead. Woolley for three, rims around and out. Stretch Lewis can't get the loose board. They'll say out of bounds, last touched by Lewis. Sometimes we've seen Woolley so far this season hesitate to shoot that three with a little bit of space. She'll drive, try to kick, but I like the aggressiveness of just grab the ball and shoot. Evans on the near wing. She traveled and pick up that pivot foot. But Hope Evans did just that. The feet were moving and the basketball wasn't, and that's rule number one in basketball. Got to put the ball down first. Jermaine Woods trying to will his team ahead. The lead that they've seen slip away. Syracuse outscoring the Eagles 15 to 13 in this third quarter. Lily ball high above her hand, gives it off for Hyman. Tisha gets it right back, draws the double. Trying to find an open teammate, doesn't like her options. Gives it off for Woolley, baseline drive, back up top for Hyman. Free throw line jumper, she got it! Tisha Hyman pulling the string, and the Orange are up by 10. One of the most underused shots in the game, but it's that elbow jump shot, she is just so smooth with it. Staples, full head of steam, almost lost her dribble, instead finds Evans up top. Hamilton, top of the key. Back for Evans to that far side corner. Now on the drive, off the glass and in. Woolley was going out for closing out, but a little bit late on the step, and so a good drive that led to the bucket there. Syracuse wanted to go quick, and Dariana Lewis clapped her hands in frustration. It was her and De'Asia Fair who got out in open space for the Cuse. Instead, they'll need to reset a bit. Hyman wants the tray ball too much. Evans in open space, two on two, and she'll slow it up. Watkins trying to create some open space. Swings it around to the near side now for Staples. Long drive to the rack, but the layup nowhere near close. Fair, one on one, working on Staples up and under. That's a nice move from the Asia Fair, and SU pushes the lead back to 10. When isn't Tiaja Fair around the basketball? It feels like wherever there's an offensive rebound or a loose ball, she is right there for the action, takes the contact, and finishes strong. Up to a game high, 20 points on the night for Fair as Hyman took a shot. But it looks like they will call it a blocking foul against Hyman herself. And number four in orange and white can't believe it. Now Coppin State is in the bonus. So the result, a trip to the free throw line. Certainly some contact from both here. You can see Watkins, she drives her arm a little bit into that one. A little confused on the call right there. Either way, it will be Jewel Watkins who goes to the line for two shots. All rookie MEAC team a year ago. Only started three games last year as a freshman. A little bit of a deeper cop in state squad a year ago under head coach Laura Harper who has since moved over to Towson, prompting Jermaine Woods to get the nod and the call up as the head coach. Woods, a very interesting story, said he was gonna give himself about 10 years as an assistant coach, an associate head coach, what have you. And if by the time 10 years rolled around, he didn't get the head coaching gig, all right, he was gonna move on and, and move on to greener pastures, whatever it is. Sure enough, year number 10 rolls around, Harper on to Towson, and this Coppin State team wanted their associate head coach Woods promoted to the head coaching spot. 
He's done a good job so far in year number one at the helm for the Eagles. Such a cool story, too, when you think about it. Spent some time at Wake Forest, last few years here with Coppin State, and when you're ready to close that book, finally it opens back up for a new opportunity. His Eagles have to hurry here, only six to go on the timer. Staples around the Sally screen, has nowhere to go with it. Two seconds, she goes up and gets it to go. Coppin State changed the deficit to just six. And oh boy, we've got a ball game in the JMA Wireless Dome. Syracuse 70, Coppin State 64. Both teams scoring at a rampant pace. And what should be a very interesting final 10 minutes coming up after the break. Is her thing that she does so well, better than anyone else on the floor right now. I'm in with 16. Deidre Fair leading the charge for Syracuse with 20 points, but it is only a six point lead for Syracuse as fourth quarter play gets underway inside the dome. Elena Rice has the basketball, just into the basketball game for Syracuse. Asia Strong wants a three, rattles around and out, but Georgia Woolley there to clean up the mess, came out of nowhere to lay in that second chance effort. What hasn't Woolley done in this second half? She has been great on defense, she has scored, and now a second chance point, an opportunity for Syracuse to bolster their lead. Woolley a fixture in the starting lineup and making the most of her minutes for the Cues. Watkins the other way, forced to pick up her dribble. Good defense being applied by Rice and Fair atop this Syracuse zone. Watkins wants a three, nowhere close. You're scratching your head at that shot. What worked in that third quarter? It was driving and finding shots down low. Coppin State got out to an early lead because of their speed and attacking Syracuse. You're not going to come back in this one by settling with the deep three-point shot. Mozzie Staple got a hand on that major strong pass. So Syracuse to inbound just in front of their own bench. The Asia Fair gets it into Hyman. Works around a woolly screen, right back. Now down low, strong. Double team all over, up with the right hand. No good. Credit the defense from Sally down low. Staying a block underneath that rim and allowing nothing to go through her. Evans working her way up ahead. Now Staples pulls the string, too strong. Rice surging up ahead for the Cubes. Hyman, quick feed for Fair in the corner. Thought about the shot, now on the drive. Good fade move. Two more points for DeAsia Fair. Up to 22 on the night, and the Cubes have a 10 point lead. Her balance is second to none. Off of one foot, fading back. It feels like every shot she takes has a great chance of going in. Staples forced a quick three and a foul on the floor before Syracuse can orchestrate any sort of transition offense. Looks to be on Asia Strong that time and a battle down low on the block with Jalinda Sally. The two just look like they got caught up with one another. Yep, got the arm here, Asia Strong and Sally. It's kind of, kind of looked like they were holding each other. So it was, it was a little back and forth. Tied up, but the result is Coppin State possession down by 10. Off the backboard, right into the hands of Elena Rice. The Asia Fair wants to get out and run. Down that left wing, underhand scoop pass for Woolley. Her three-pointer well too short. And Staples the board for the Eagles. You're seeing some rush shots. You can tell both teams are a little tired, a little bit nervous in this fourth quarter. Settle down, slow it up, get into your offense. Coppin State still scoreless since coming out of the break. Now it's Hyman's turn to concoct the play, but she led Woolley a bit too much. Oh, it was a great idea and a great look to Woolley as she made that great backdoor cut. And you love to see that kind of fake jump shot and dump down just a little bit too much on it. I'm in a bit displeased with herself. That her first turnover of the night though. So Tisha prioritizing taking care of the basketball. We have to mention that too. This is someone who leads the team in turnovers. She had one against Purdue in her absolute monster performance. And now with one tonight too, she's really gonna done a better job of handling the basketball. Another Georgia Woolley takeaway gives Syracuse possession. Jaime locates Fair over the logo. Now right to the rack, she's fouled. Georgia Fair just has 
the most epic confidence I've ever seen. It doesn't matter who's around her, if it's one, two, or three bodies, she just charges full steam ahead, sees Watkins, sees Evans, doesn't matter, she's still going to the rim. Fair, one of the most highly touted transfers across the nation. This past offseason had offers from Baylor, UConn, Iowa. Opted to follow her head coach at Buffalo, Felicia Leggett Jack, over to Syracuse. And a move that's allowed her to really lead the charge for a 6 and 2 Syracuse team is steaming towards ACC play. That says so much about Coach Jack, too. You have all these other options, but who do you follow? You follow your leader, the person that inspires you to be better. And that's why she's here wearing the orange and blue. Trying to will Syracuse to a Thursday night victory over the Eagles. Kind to lay it off the back rim, but up and in from Colleen Buckner, whose name we haven't called a ton in this fourth quarter yet. But Buckner making her presence known. Fair one of the N1 on the other end. Boy, that ball hung up there on that rim for a couple of seconds. We could have saw a three-point opportunity right there from Asia Fair. She wasted no time after the bucket from Coppin State. Takes the contact. Oh, the swirl. Here he goes in. So now fair to the line for two shots. And to go back to Coppin State on that last possession too, that's exactly what you need to do to stay in this game. It was a drive, great cut from Colleen Buckner, shooting shots close to the rim. That's what has kept them in this game so much. SU now outscoring Coppin State 7-2 in this fourth quarter so far. Syracuse sporting that zone as always to the rack and a foul. Now Asia Strong is playing with four fouls, so if this is on her, that would be it. But it looks like Strong is not the one who got the booking after all. It's Georgia Woolley. And Hope Evans, great job of being strong inside. When we asked Coach Woods, what's one word to describe Hope Evans? He said dynamite. Someone that can really go off for this team. Haven't said her name too much in this one, but you're seeing a spark here late in the fourth quarter. Line drive, free throw is good on the first attempt. Trying to make this a single digit ball game. She just, uh, she does just that. You're within nine. It's under seven minutes. Got to play some really tight defense here. Get your hands up, no open threes, and sink that middle. Elena Rice, full head of steam. Just tried to make something happen. She'll take the results, two shots. Syracuse is taking a page out of Coppin State's book, just driving inside into the lane. Great job keeping her eyes up. Elena Rice doesn't allow that ball to get stripped and has two chances here at the line. Syracuse holding the Eagles to just four points so far in this fourth quarter. A Syracuse defense that is a pretty good indicator as to whether or not the Orange are going to win games or not. In SU six wins, they're holding opponents to only 55 points per game. In their two losses, opponents scoring, scoring nearly 85 a game. Hamilton booked with the foul, so Syracuse takes it right back. Just another offensive foul that really shoots yourself in the foot that time because if Coppin State sets up their offense, scores a bucket, it's back to a single digit game here. But this is where Syracuse can really take advantage and continue to push that lead and try and get it out of reach. Coppin State trying to take advantage of the size. It's Sally the center who takes the spot of Hamilton, a guard. I'm in around a fair screen. Working on her defender staples. Now it's Woolley probing around. Fair going with the left hand, switches over to the right, but couldn't cash it in. Here come the Eagles on the break. Watkins up top, Evans lefty dribble. Swung around for Watkins, that's the look she wants, and that's the look she connects on. Excellent ball movement. That all starts with the unselfish play of continuing to rope the basketball around the perimeter. Finds the open shooter and Watkins drains it. 
top and Stain hanging around down by just eight. Rice strong to the cup. Outlet feed Hyman. Had to dive to make sure that ball would go out of bounds. Now Fair getting jiggy with it. Up and in. Deasia Fair, how do you make it look so easy? SU up by 10. I don't think you could have used a better word than getting jiggy with it. She is just unstoppable in the paint. Possession kept alive for the Eagles. Here's Staples yet again. Won't go. And Hyman the rebound. Here come the Qs. Three on two. Fair goes to the right block. Left it short. Strong the rebound. Goes up amongst a bunch of skyscrapers around her and is fouled. There was... There was a whole flock of Eagles there and a great job from Strong. SU up by 10. Coppin State running out of time. Coppin State in the midst of a four game losing streak, only down by 10 against Syracuse. A Coppin State squad picked to finish up towards the top of that MEAC preseason poll. Their head coach, Jermaine Woods, well, He's got three sets that he likes. His players focusing on their mindset, their skill set, and if it doesn't work, reset. And perhaps some things to reset here. Still a double-digit deficit with that clock only shrinking. Under five minutes to go here. There's still a lot of time left. And Coach has preached, and he mentioned that to us, that your habits need to make you meet your goals. And if they don't, then you have to reset. Meet the goals right here in these last five minutes. And you're still trailing by just 10. He's just strong at the free throw line for Syracuse. And the first shot is Cash. It's a Coppin State team that does have a track record against ACC squads. They opened the year against Pittsburgh. Didn't win the game, but hung around it. Only a 15-point loss and held the Panthers to just 56 points on the night. Definitely a different type of game, though, here a few weeks later against Syracuse. Well, when you see their record at 2-7, and seven, you think, well, that's too bad. But at the end of the day, they're hanging really close to every single team that they have played this season. Hanging around with the Qs here. Staples can't make the deficit any smaller. She does collect her own board, though, and a shot clock reset. Watkins working on Hyman. Watkins right back, Woolley in her face, and alters that shot. Sally, another offensive rebound. Hyman takes it away. Tisha and DeAsia up ahead. Hyman stops, probes for options, takes the jumper instead. Off front rim. Evans quickly the other way, one on one, off the glass, right into the hands of Georgia Woolley. Not a lot of rhythm right now for the Eagles offensively. And Syracuse certainly in no hurry whatsoever. And you look at that last shot from Tisha Hyman, too. She looked around. No one was covering her, so you take that jump shot. But here, under four minutes to go, you want to melt as much clock as possible with this game still being in reach for the Eagles. You see that foul from the right-hand side, too. Just grabbing a little bit too much from Sally, and that's why Strong's at the line. Right back to the line where she was moments ago. Strong, someone that Orange fans are very excited about, and for good reason. Wichita State transfer that had a couple of stops before that as well. Bradley, Trinity Valley Community College before that. A lot of expertise and a whole lot of pedigree for number 15 in Orange and White. She's been in a bunch of different puzzles, and she's finally found a hole that she fits with the orange. Elena Rice tips it right into the fingers of Tisha Hyman. She lost the basketball, dribbled faster than she could keep it, but Asia Strong lays it in. Wow, must have been eyes in the back of her head. It didn't even look like she could see Strong and found her for the bucket. A 16-point lead for Syracuse. The orange in cruise control down the home stretch. Oh, the ACC opener right around the corner for Syracuse women's basketball. And Deasia Fair playing like she's ready for ACC competition. A season-high 27 points, and she's also been a facilitator, too, on the court. Six assists. She can dish it. She can shoot it. I don't know what she can't do, Johnny. 
Syracuse on an 8-0 run. Coppin State on the other hand. Well, they've got ice cold over their last six and haven't scored in going on three minutes. Running out of time. Watkins trying to make something happen. Keisha Hyman swats it away. Last touch by Hyman, but give hands, to say the least, from the White Plains native. And Coppin State got back into this game in the third quarter because Syracuse's defense slouched a little bit. But you've seen it them get back into this one too because they're adding the pressure active hands having bodies on bodies and boxing out not allowing any second chance opportunities four on the shot clock top and state needs to hurry evans on the drive hamilton no good is sally the offensive rebound a lot of contact down there between Keisha Hyman, and jalinda sally and asia strong Gets the offensive rebound, moving the arm and the elbow, and just kind of comes through. A little bit too aggressive here. It's been that kind of game. If you're Coppin State, there's no way you come in here to the JMA Dome and knock off Syracuse without being physical. And you expect that too. Emotions are running a little bit high. You're trailing by 16 points here in a game that you were up, you were close. And, and that's going to happen a little bit, but you just, you can't do that. You can't start swinging the elbows there. That's not an offensive move. That's something that can be taken more than just a personal foul. And the officials looking at this to determine just that. For what it's worth, the rebound does give you into Sally the double-double. 13 points, 10 boards. She has been a force all night long, and they're just keeping an eye on the elbows to see exactly how egregious, if at all, this last occurrence was. Well, you see the rip through here, but it's just unnecessary when she comes back that second time. And Asia Strong has to move out of the way a little bit because those elbows are just flying a little bit. I don't think there was a lot of malice in this, but certainly enough contact to be more than a personal foul. I think it's the very end of that sequence probably that they're looking at when she twists around and, and gets strong with that right elbow. She's been a bully on the block all night because she has out-rebounded. She has outplayed down low on the block, but Syracuse is starting to shut her down, and that's where some of that frustration might be coming from. Strong on the night, 16 points. Only three rebounds to go a long hand with it. She's been playing the last few minutes with four fouls. Three Syracuse players, four fouls. Asia Strong, Georgia Woolley, and Sanaya Wilson. Each one away from their day being done. So nothing further than that personal foul, the officials determine. So the result is Cup and State possession, down by 16, under three minutes to go. Watkins from the mid-range, that's catch. Coppin State has to move quick here. Maybe even try the full court press. Go for a steal. Try to get the basketball and move back up the court. For Syracuse, just suck away at that clock right now. No real sense of urgency for Syracuse. Tisha Hyman's just going to keep scoring points in the meantime. Doing what she does best. She's up to 18 now on the night on a very efficient 7 of 12 from the floor. It just feels like as the game continues, she just gets better and better. A little bit cold in that first quarter and second. Didn't see her much, but man, has she warmed up. Watkins trying to put the team on her back. Syracuse takes it as it was last touched off an Eagles player. Credit to Syracuse, too. Coming back into this one, Coppin State really put the pressure on this team, made them look themselves in the mirror and go, we have to come back out in this second half as a unified team and take that, take back the lead on our home court. An off-ball offensive foul against Asia Strong. That is her fifth, so she is done. Dariana Lewis out of the court for Syracuse, but Asia Strong receives... A nice ovation from the Orange Faithful on head. As she should. She worked hard. She came in off the bench and really never quit. She never gave up on the ball. She was strong at the rim and just played hard until she fouled out. First game of the season that Strong has not been a part of the starting lineup. Should certainly be interesting to see how that starting five progresses for Felicia against Jack's crew moving forward. At this point, Watkins just trying to jump. 
Catholic State needs to make something happen in a hurry. Hyman wants to keep pushing the break, and she does just that. 20 points for Tisha Hyman, the second Q's player to hit the 20 mark on the night. And the Orange in firm control here. I was gonna say no need to rush the shot, but if you're Tisha Hyman, eh, it goes through. Staples on the other end for what it's worth, two more. Most of the starters still out there on the court for Syracuse. Deasia Fair working on her defender. Whistle came before the shot got off and we'll have a flurry of substitutions here on both sides. Just checking in and big ovation here for Deasia Fair. She has played phenomenal tonight on the offensive end to the defense where she's picked the pockets of many players. She has been the it factor in this game. Season high of 27, two steals as well. Woolley to the cup, lays it in, and that's a new season high for Syracuse. 93 points on the night. They blow by that 92 mark they set against Binghamton on November the 14th, and the Orange offense out in full force. There's no doubt this team can score it well, and give credit to Georgia Woolley. Didn't settle with the three-point shot, drove inside and found home off the glass. Kennedy Perkins into the game now for Syracuse. Ava Irvin on the court as well. So Felicia Leggett Jack dipping a bit further and further into that bench and for good reason is now Lexi McNabb onto the court as well. Great ovation as those starters should get played one heck of a game and this is where your subs can come in and get some work. Give credit where credit is due. Coppin State hung around but in the end it was just a bit too little too late. SU is outscored at Coppin State 23 to 11 so far in this fourth quarter and the Eagles just two of their last 12. You got the sense we're just a bit tired down the home stretch. Well, and one thing too to note, Johnny, if you came into this game and you told me that Coppin State was gonna be leading after the first quarter and that it was gonna be a tight battle at the second half, I probably wouldn't have believed you because this team has struggled in their first nine games, but they really hung tight, they played tough, and they brought the punch to Syracuse. Next up for the Cues, they're right here back at home. Coming up this Sunday afternoon, a home tilt with Wagner before the ACC opener a week from that Wagner game on December the 18th against Wake Forest. And that is a date that a lot of Orange fans have had circled on their calendar. It's one thing to pick up wins in the non-conference portion of your schedule, but by the time you get to that Atlantic Coast play loop, you want to be at your best, and it certainly seems like Syracuse is approaching that conference opener with momentum on its side. And Syracuse has done a good job in these non-conference battles. They've, they've hung tight, they've played good competition, and you're seeing that they're getting better as this season progresses. As for Coppin State, they continue this 10-game road stand. Game number six of that road stand comes Sunday at St. Francis of Pennsylvania. But as for tonight... The Eagles hung around, but Syracuse pulls away down the home stretch. The Orange set a new season high in points with 93 and take down Coppin State 93 to 75. Your final from inside the dome. What a game from both sides. You love to see the fight from the orange and blue and the blue and yellow. You really have to credit Coach Woods and his crew for really finding their way in this game. But again, this 